It's fair to say Manchester City have spent a lot of money on defenders since Pep Guardiola joined, and they have shown this once again with the signing of Josko Vardiol for £77 million from RB Leipzig. This makes Vardiol the second most expensive defender signing in football history, and at the age of just 21, there's going to be massive expectations that he lives up to that fee. But how will the player fit into Pep Guardiola's tactics going into the 23-24 season? Now first, I think it's good to explain the basic premise of Pep Guardiola's tactics from a simple level. So Pep plays a variation of positional play in football and what this is is basically enables teams to progress the ball forward using triangles and diamonds created for the ball carriers on the pitch. So in a sense this doesn't really have positions and is more of a system based thing as we would see with the inverted fullback situation or someone like John Stones last season moving into more of a midfield role than a defence role. This system only works with really really top players and it's usually used by drawing in opponents players towards the ball while that will free up another player in behind on their own team. However Pep Guardiola does like changing things up quite a lot so if this will be the main idea for the rest of the season we will yet to see so Guardiola is going to have to adapt a lot to what Pep Guardiola does like all the players around him do. So far Guardiola has played two games for Manchester City. He came on late against Burnley when they were freed up and starred in the Super Cup against Seville in the week where we got to see a good indication of what Pep Guardiola wants for him. Now straight away from Vardio you can tell why Manchester City signed him as he is a traditional modern day centre back is exactly what they needed. He can perform all the necessary defensive tasks of a traditional defender while also providing his team with serious ball progression in possession which helps Man City get forward. It is also a very good asset to have as a player because when you're playing for Man City some teams might feel brave against you and might press you quite hard and when you've got a great progressive passer in the back it is a very good way of beating the press a bit like what Van Dijk used to do for Liverpool in his prime. These stats were solidified even more when the 2022 World Cup came along as Guardiola was the third highest in line breaking passes throughout defenders in that tournament and the only two people above him were John Stones and Rodri who both played for Man City already and played for dominant possession sides which Guardiola did not with Croatia. However to counteract that Guardiola has another great asset to his game and it is ball carrying. If the pass is not on he is very good at making carries and last season the Bundesliga who made just over 23 carries running with the ball over five meters or more per 90. In the Bundesliga this was only bettered by Bayern Munich Dea Upamecano but even more surprisingly in the Premier League it was only bettered by three other players and astonishingly all three of these players played for Manchester City being Diaz, Jack Grealish and Akanji and out of the 23 carries he did per game 12 of them ended up being progressive moving the ball at least five meters directly upfield and despite being so good with his feet Vardio is also a massive physical presence being really good at 1v1 defending and being really good at pushing people off the ball and making the right decisions defensively other than Messi but he is the GOAT so I get it. So this is what we know about Vardial before he signed for Manchester City and this is why they decided to spend all that money on him. But where does it look like he is fitting in with the system early days? So in the last few months Pep Guardiola has actually reimagined his back line often lined up with four centre backs across the back four and not really using full backs at all. Ake and Akanji have normally played centre back but can use the full back role. Obviously Stones have been moved into midfield as well so it's just a bit of a weird system of how Vardial fits as a modern day centre back. However on Wednesday in the Super Cup we actually saw him playing a lot of different roles for Manchester City seeing him adapt in game to them. He did say after the game that he felt like he struggled but I can understand it with the whole new tactical system compared to Leipzig. In the lineup officially he was listed as the left centre back and Nathan Ake was listed as the left back. But watching the game it definitely did not seem like that and it seemed like Vardial was put out on the left a lot more. This is going to be very comfortable for Vardial especially early days because he played left back when he first broke in the Croatian team and also played left back for Dynamo Zagreb when he was going through their ranks. In the second half Sevilla were playing very deep when they were 1-0 up trying to reserve their lead and this gave a lot of time on the ball for Manchester City's players. I would be wary to think that Vardial will play left back for most of his Manchester City career because it could have been a preservation by Pep just to make sure he was outside the danger zone in such a big game in his first game for the club. In the game you could definitely see the talent he has. He was very good on the ball and actually was very comfortable using his quick feet to get out of dangerous situations because he was pressed quite a lot in that first half and he did make some mistakes with the ball pushing out a bit too much or making the wrong pass in that left sided position but he hasn't played left back at this sort of level in his career so it must have been hard to adapt so quickly and sometimes in this game he was actually used to invert or bring the ball forward from that left side even though he weren't in centre back and this is something that Pep Guardiola has said that he wants from him and the reason why they have sold Laporte to Saudi. Laporte was very good at his ball progressive passes which Guardiola is very 
very good at as well. But Laporte would not carry the ball forward himself if there was no options available. He would just pass it around the back waiting for one to open. Vardio, if he did not see a position open, he just kept running with the ball. And in some positions, this helped attackingly and let people have more space in behind. This will help him be the out for Manchester City when they're getting pressed hard and they're in a difficult situation as he can run with the ball also making the good pass. And he's probably going to rotate with Ake in positional play in game with sometimes Ake taking up that left back spot and sometimes Guardiola taking up that centre back spot. He also did a good job at actually inverting in this game and when obviously Man City used their full back or centre halves in the full back positions to invert, he actually was very comfortable of making good tackles and good decisions in the midfield of the pitch even though it is much more elevated than he usually is. This is something that players like Laporte have struggled with in the past and Sergi Gomez, that's why that they brought Vardio in to sort of be that left back situation if Ake can't play or Ake wants to play in centre back with that role. It gives Man City more tactical adeptness and it lets them do a lot more in defence than they could before. Vardio could be a great signing and even though that he had made some mistakes on his debut it was clear to see that this player is going to be a talent under Pep Guardiola. So Manchester City fans would be very encouraged of what they saw if you actually look at the game from a tactical standpoint. It also helps to play him in this position because when they are one on one against top wingers in the world such as Saka or Vinny Jr then there's going to be a real struggle to get past Vardio who is brilliant one on one as he is an actual real defender and not a full back who attacks. What do you think of this sign and do you think it's worth it for this sort of money and who do you want to see us cover next as the next tactical analysis? If you want to see our analysis on Bradley Barcodo who's been linked with Chelsea please check that out in the description and please like and subscribe. Thank you.